Well, welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. This is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with. Boys and girls, as we go into our Thanksgiving season, I just pray that you have shown gratitude towards those individuals who have poured so much into your lives. Boys and girls, how we show gratitude or show thankfulness, we are grateful in our hearts, but we also say so. So if there is someone who has poured into your life, boys and girls, give them those two simple words of sincere thank you. Just say thank you. It doesn't cost you much, but it makes the world of difference in the life of the person who has been pouring into your life, be it your parents, be it your caregivers, be it your teachers, be it um, anyone, friends and other family members, whom, whoever have poured into your life, just say thank Thank you. Oh, it goes so far. Just a little gratitude. Don't walk around with an attitude of entitlement. What that means, boys and girls, you think that you deserve what you are receiving. So you don't need to say thank you. No, don't go with that attitude, boys and girls. Go with the attitude of gratitude because that will determine your altitude. How far and how high you go would be determined by how thankful you are. And you don't just say it in your heart, but say it with your lips. Amen. Amen. Well, happy Thanksgiving to each of you. And as family members comes around, boys and girls, show that attitude of gratitude. And also take that opportunity, if you have the courage, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity of bringing us together once again to study a portion of your word. Bless the word, dear Lord. Bless the hearers of your word. May it go forth and pour into the hearts and minds of these children as seed planted that produces roots and bear much fruit as the children put into practice what they learn today. Bless in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for just a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Hello again, my little ones and parents and families. My name is Miss Mose, and it's time for, you know what, another true Bible story coming from my home to yours. So welcome. Let's begin by singing a Good morning song to God. You know the words, so here we go. Good morning, God, we love you. Good morning, God, we love you. We are so glad you saved us from our sin through Jesus. Thank you for loving us first. Great singing. Next, let's pray to God. When we pray, we're talking to God. Our hands we fold so tightly. Our heads we bow so gently. Dear God, you are good and you are holy. Thank you for loving us so much, even though we do wrong. Teach us, O oh Lord, what you want us to learn in this lesson today about sin. And Lord, help me to do my very best to teach your little children this lesson. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, boys and girls, you know that all our stories in the Bible are true, and they happened long ago. And our Bible lesson today is called God's People Were Taken Captive. God's people were taken captive. Well, they were taken captive because something they had done. But before I go any further, where did our lesson come from today? It came from, of course, the Bible. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapters 35 and chapter 36, right here in my Bible. Now, before we go any further, we are going to do a finger play to help you Get ready to listen. Now, the name of this finger play is The Church. We have done it before, so you know the words, but we're going to do it differently this time. You're going to need to use your arms and your fingers. 
So are you ready to do the finger play called the church? Here we go. Are you standing? This is the church. This is the steeple. Raise that steeple high. Open the doors, open your arms wide and see all the people inside. Look at all the people inside the church. They sing many songs and they pray many prayers. And then they fold their hands and sit down to listen. Now you may sit down. Are you sitting down to listen? Well, good. Well, as I said, the Bible tells many sad stories and happy stories, but this one is a sad story. And there are two words I want to teach you what they mean because you're going to hear them when I tell the story. The first word is sin. S-I-N, sin. What is sin? We know it's not good because of that sad face you see. Well, sin is anything that we think, say, or do that the Bible tells us we should never do. So let's sing a song about sin to help you remember. Every time we say the word sin, I want you to do X out like that. And when we say Bible, I want you to put your hands together as if you're reading the Bible. So here we go with the song, What is Sin? Follow along with me. What is sin? What is sin? Sin is anything we think, say, or do that the Bible says we should never do. Once more. What is sin? What is sin? Sin is anything we think, say, or do that the Bible says we should never do. Very good. Now, the next word we need to know is captive. C-A-P-T-I-V-E. But well, what does captive mean? Remember God's people were taken captive? Well, captive means when someone comes to your home and takes you away, far away from your home where you don't want to go, and they treat you mean where they take you. Well, that's what happened to God's people. They were taken captive. Well, why? Well, long ago, the people of Judah God's people who lived in the city of Jerusalem had many, many kings, and some of their kings were good kings, and some of them were bad kings. Well, our story today is about a king named Josiah. Now, Josiah, guess what, became king when he was only eight years old. Isn't that incredible? Well, Josiah was a good king. He loved God. He obeyed God. And God's people in Ju Judah loved God and they obeyed God too. King Josiah even took all the idol gods that the bad kings had put in God's temple and had them thrown away. Well, King Josiah had three sons. And their names were Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. Now, King Josiah also had a grandson, too, and his name was Jehoiakim. These names sound a lot alike at the beginning, don't they? Well, each of these kings had a turn to be king, but guess what? None of those kings was a good king like King Josiah. Well, one day something sad happened. King Josiah died. And when King Josiah died, his son became king. And his name was 
Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz. Now Jehoahaz became king, but guess what? He was not a good king. He was a bad king. And he was not a king for a long time because he did bad things that God did not like. Even the people did bad things. So guess what happened? The king of Egypt took Jehoahaz away and made him a prisoner. So he was in captivity in Egypt. So Jehoahaz's brother became king and his name was Jehoiakim. Now Jehoiakim was not a good king either. He did bad things and the people of Judah did bad things too. They sinned. They did not love God. But guess what happened to Jehoiakim? Because he did wrong things, the king of Babylon told his army men to come and take him as a prisoner to Babylon. Now Babylon was a city far away and the people there were really mean and they did not know God and they did not love God. They worshiped idols. Well, after he was sent to Babylon, the next king was Jehoahaz's brother, Jehoiakim. Now Jehoiakim was also a bad, bad king. He did many wrong things. He did not love God because, you know what? The king of Babylon made him king. So we know he was a mean king because the king of Babylon was a mean king who did not love God. So guess what happened? The king of Babylon made Jehoiakim's uncle king, and his name was Jedekiah. Now, you know Jedekiah was a bad king because the king of Babylon made him king. And do you know what? He was a bad king too. He did what was wrong. He led the people in Judah to do wrong things too. But God loved his people, even though they did many sinful things. But God did not want to destroy his people. So guess what God did? He sent prophets to talk to the people of Judah. Do you remember the prophet Isaiah we talked about? God sent him to tell the people to stop sinning. Well, God did not want to destroy his people in Judah. So God sent many, many prophets to talk to these people in Judah. And the pro prophets told them, stop sinning, love and obey God. But did the people listen? No, they did not listen. They kept right on sinning. Now God had to punish them because he had given them a chance to stop sinning, but they wouldn't. They would sin and sin and sin. So guess what God did? God allowed their enemy, the Babylonians, to come to Jerusalem and the mean Babylonians and their army tore down the whole city of Jerusalem. They even took things out of God's temple, and they burned down the temple. They tore down the walls around the city of Jerusalem, and many people were killed. And the people who were not killed, guess what happened to them? The king told his mean army men to take all the people who were still living back to Babylon, and there they would be prisoners and they would have to work hard for the king and his family. So sad. But God still loved his people. Just as he loves us, 
when we sin and God had a plan for our sin problem, do you know what God's plan was? God promised and he did what he promised. God sent us a good and perfect king, a forever king to take the punishment for our sin. And do you know who that perfect forever king is? Did you say Jesus? Yes, Jesus is the perfect king, forever king that God sent from heaven to earth to take the punishment for our sin because he loves us. Well, that was a good story, but it was a sad story. And we have to remember that God loves us, but he does not love sin. That's why he sent Jesus, our forever king, to save us from sin. Well, our time is almost up, but we need to read our key verse for today. And it's found in the Bible in the book of Psalm, right here. Chapter 134, verse chapter 139 verse 14 and it says right here I will praise you because I am wonderfully made your works are wonderful I know that full well do you know what that means boys and girls that means we are special to God because God made us in his own image and he thinks we are wonderful we are wonderful, but sin is not wonderful. And anytime we say or think or do something that the Bible tells us not to do, that's a sin. But God had a plan for our sin problem. Guess what? God sent a forever king, a good king, a perfect king to take the punishment for our sin. And do you know who that forever king was that God promised to send? And he did. Jesus. Yes, Jesus is our forever king. And we can believe in Jesus because he took the punishment for our sins. And God loved us so much that he sent a forever king to take the punishment that we should take. But Jesus had never sinned. Well, it's almost time for us to go. And we need to do our key Bible verse. And it comes from Psalm 2nd. I'm sorry. It comes from Psalm chapter 139 verse 14. And it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. Well, boys and girls, that means that we are very special to God because he made us in his own image and he loves us very much. Our time is up. So you know what to do with me when it's time to say goodbye on the count of three. One, two, three. Goodbye. I love you, but God loves you best. <laughs>